What we're going to be discussing today is how to resolve a two-dimensional vector. We have over here a 25 Newton vector which is pointing at an angle of 50 degrees to the horizontal. We can actually represent this vector as a sum of two vectors, one along the y-axis, and I can represent this with this dotted line over here, and one across the x-axis, which is going to be this vector's horizontal component. In fact, this 25 Newton vector could really be represented by two arrows, one going to the right and one going upwards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call the opposite component to, to the angle, uh, let's just call that y, and um, what I'm going to do is call the other component x. To find the y component, what we're going to be using is some trigonometry. So let's start off with the definition of the sine function. So remember, if you remember our so Katoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 50 is opposite over our hypotenuse. Now our opposite in this case is just y and our hypotenuse is 25. So we can just rearrange this equation for, for y and we get that y is going to be 25 multiplied by sine of 50. Like so, and if we put that into a scientific calculator, we're going to get 19 newtons up to two significant figures. So our y component is actually 19 newtons. So I can just write that over here. That's actually 19 newtons. Right, well now we have one more component to find. This is the x component. Now in order to do so, we're going to use Another trigonometric function, and the obvious one to have a look for, is the cosine. Now, remember in this case, well, in all cases really, the cosine of uh, an angle is in general the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Now, in this case, our adjacent, we've just called that x, our hypotenuse is 25. Now, once again, I can just rearrange for, for x simply by multiplying this 25 in front of the cos 50 and what I'm going to get is that our x component is 25 cos of 50 and putting those numbers into a calculator I get approximately 16 newtons up to two significant figures. So in fact this 25 Newton force acting at an angle of 50 degrees is actually exactly the same as having a horizontal force of 16 Newtons acting to the right and a vertical force of 19 Newtons acting directly upwards. We can actually come up with a general rule for this type of vector addition and um, we can just express this in terms of symbols. For example, if I have a generic force f, it could also be a velocity v or a different vector quantity. As long as it's vector quantity, it doesn't really matter what we, what we call it. Fy, the vertical component, is going to be the hypotenuse f times the sine of the angle and our horizontal component, fx, is going to be the, the hypotenuse times the cosine of that angle. We just need to be aware because sometimes a question might try and trick us, as we'll have a look in a couple of examples in a minute, by perhaps giving us this angle over here. So uh, we just need to keep an eye for that, but this rule in general will always work.
Okay guys, well let's apply what we have learned so far to an example. We have a velocity vector acting at 40 meters per second at an angle of 34 degrees to the vertical. What we need to do is find out the vertical component of the velocity vy and the horizontal component of the velocity, call that vx. Now would be a perfect time for you guys to pause this video and attempt this question independently please. Let's have a look at the solution to this problem. We need to be quite careful with the angle here because the opposite of the 34 degrees now is actually the horizontal component. So we can start off by just writing that sine of 34. That's going to be opposite of a hypotenuse. So this is going to be Vx divided by our hypotenuse, which is 40. So that means that Vx is going to be 40 multiplied by the sine of 34 degrees and putting those values into a calculator we're going to get 22 meters per second. Now let's have a look at the um, the vertical component, excuse me, so we're going to have a look at the cosine of 34. As we know, the cosine is the adjacent. In this case, this is our adjacent. We're going to need to divide that by hypotenuse, which is just here. So cosine of 34 is going to be equal to Vy divided by 40, which means that our vertical component Vy is going to be 40 multiplied by the cosine of 34 degrees. Multiplying those two numbers out together in a scientific calculator, we're going to get 33 meters per second up to two significant figures. Notice that, so our Y component is 22 meters per second. So let's just write that down and our X component is 33 meters per second. Quite a typical exam error that I've noticed over the years is sometimes a student can get exactly the correct calculation but they may just forget to label the X and Y calculation. So in this case, that's really, really important because we need to know that this over here is the calculation for the X axis and then the other calculation is, is for the Y axis. Okay, folks, I hope this was useful. If there are any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and please consider subscribing. Thank you very much.